What's up, you beautiful collectors and action figure fans? It's the one and only Optibotomus coming with another video review. And on today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the new Unique Toys R01 Peru Kill, which is basically their version of a masterpiece style lockdown from Transformers The Age of Extinction. From Transformers Age of Extinction. Now, a lot of times we use the word masterpiece and it basically just describes the scale and the size of a figure, but this truly is a masterpiece. For the package, you can see what you basically have here is like the front corner section of Lockdown's Lamborghini mode. You can see you got unique toys, you got the logo there. You can kind of sort of see some like faded in logos right there. Like there's a Optimus head, there was like a Maximal head. It's hard to tell what all these are, but you have a whole bunch of different ones. The side here or bottom section has a really, I mean, that's what we're dealing with here guys get excited you got that you got a really gorgeous side image of his vehicle mode you got that an opposite image right there the top has the gun face <laughs> on the back of the package you got basically those same images some stuff that i can't read but then you have more full scale images of like his robot mode and then a little bit of a silhouette here which i don't know why they silhouetted that unless when this was first announced it wasn't known that he was going to be coming down with a steel jaw but hey guess what he comes with a steel jaw so <laughs> for the packaging on this guy that's about it so without further ado let's get him out here and see how cool he actually is all right, guys, so here we have Peru Kill, otherwise known as Masterpiece Lockdown, open up out of his packaging and obviously in his vehicle mode. Now, starting off first, he does come with his collector card. You just got an image of him in his robot mode and vehicle mode it says R01 Peru Kill. The back has tech specs. Uh, I don't necessarily know what they mean. Like, is that supposed to be like dexterity? I, I have I have no idea. Health points? I. It's strange. I, I have no idea, but it's made out of this nice kind of credit card thickness uh, plastic that, you, you know, we, we get this all the time now. And then looking at first his accessories, uh, the big one here is Steel Jaw. Now, this isn't bad. Uh, I kind of look at this as a bit of a throwaway sort of accessory because... It, it's really cool. It's not 100% accurate, but it does do a decent job of looking, I guess, like the character. And it's nicely done. You can see you got a really nice silver paint. And that looks really very nice. You got some nice reddish brown with some nice paint variation throughout it, giving it a little bit darker of a tone in some areas. He's got these little rubber pieces up here, kind of like a razorback sort of thing uh, but this is made out of a rubbery material which is nice again some nice good silver paint on the lower portion of the legs you got a little bit of a i'm trying to see if that's a red translucent little jewel in his eyes i think it is i don't think it's painted but overall really solid looking nicely articulated as well you can see that the head i think it's on a ball joint uh, you can get it looking like that and like that and you can twist it sure do whatever you want uh, he does have very sharp teeth uh, which is uh, not necessarily a bad thing, but when you're trying to open his mouth, uh, at first it was very tight and I was stabbing myself. I didn't bleed or anything, but these are very sharp, so be very careful when you're playing with it. That's definitely a safety thing that something like Hasbro could never get away with doing. Uh, he's got ball jointed shoulders up here and at the back so you get a nice forward and back and then they pivot in and out slightly you do have hinges here at the i guess knee area and then the hind knee you got ball joints here for his little paws overall like i said really solid looking uh, i wish it was a little bit more accurate just when you compare how accurate this guy is it, it feels like a bit of a letdown that he's not as accurate as that but really solid looking accessory uh, he does come with his face cannon um i know this is a very funny thing amongst transformer fans why did he develop a giant cannon from his face um i don't know because it's michael bay and michael bay put testicles on a transformer so why not have a giant cannon come from a guy's face hey, don't ask questions just go with it but again really nice paint it's mostly done in black you got some nice silver accents got a couple gold bits right here you can see like little bullet things down here with a nice copper look uh, this back bit right here is made out of a die cast material that uh, does 
kind of, I don't know if, if I'm going to capture that. Oh, you can kind of see it right there. It has a little bit of a rainbow effect to it. Uh, that's just the nature of the material. Uh, this will incorporate with his robot mode. If you don't want to use that in robot mode, you've got a little post here on steel jaw that you can actually put that in. You can then bring that around and you can have that for it. Uh, he also does have a handle. Uh, putting this down here, you can bring this down. Uh, this will, I believe this section here, he'll be able to hold it or something. I, I, I'm not 100% certain if, if he can actually hold that, to be totally honest with you. But you do have this little section here. I mean, the, the whole thing then springs open and then you wrap that around his head. So I believe that this is a handle. We'll play with that here in a bit. Uh, he comes with a couple other accessories, little minor ones. Uh, the first time that we saw Lockdown, uh, he had this really cool like underwater face mask. Uh, they replicated that here. You can see a nice green translucent bit there in the center. Nice uh, molded detail throughout the rest of the mask and then this just pulls off and puts on in replace of the uh, regular face but really nice detail on that as well uh, he also does come with his dagger claw thing so as you can see it's in the dagger configuration here you can then rotate this and he's got the lockdown hook thing which is great one thing that I'm a little bit disappointed in, all this cool stuff that he comes with, he doesn't come with the spark extractor that he used to basically murder Ratchet. Uh, I don't know why they couldn't have done something like that. I mean, if you put a couple more hinges in this, you could have opened this bottom section out. Uh, like if you had a hinge down here, it could have swiveled out and could have looked a little bit more like that or... Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like they could have incorporated that into this, and that's a bit of a letdown. This is really nice, but to be totally honest, I mean, well, I mean, Lockdown, a lot of people think of Lockdown as having the hook on his hand, so I guess that makes sense. That works. Uh, I kind of like that as an accessory. I just, I, I think that there was more of a dramatic kind of scene when he was basically killing Ratchet, and I think that that would have been a cool accessory to include with it. Uh, he also does come with one of the seeds. Uh, this, I feel like this is, I don't know how to describe it, kind of kind of plain. Uh, I mean, as you can see, it's just done in this uh, nice silver paint. Uh, maybe if they made this die cast to give it a little bit more heft to it, that would have been nice. But you can see nice molded detail on it. I just feel like this is kind of eh. I, get, I mean, it, it, it was a plot point in the movie, so it, it, it makes sense to include it. But again, if you're going to include something like this, then why not include the spark extractor that he had? So I guess that's uh, kind of how I look at it. For vehicle mode, though, this is absolutely spectacular. I mean, people have asked me time and time again to do like a top 10 list of uh things that i've reviewed in a year this would definitely make a lot of people's lists this is that darn good uh, you can see really nice black paint everything on here nicely replicates exactly how this particular lamborghini which i don't remember what kind it is I'm, i know somebody's going to leave me a comment and let me know what it is i, I don't care so you can, but it's not going to make any difference to me. I'll never remember it. Uh, but everything on here is nicely replicated. All the lines are very angular, very sleek looking. You can see the inside here. You got the nice coloring for the brakes, uh, silver in there, and then you got some orange on the inside. You can kind of see that. You can see some turn signals. You can see some little highlights here. You got the tail lights, which have a nice reddish color to it. Actually, that yeah, that's a translucent red bit. Uh, you got some nice silver down here for the exhaust. You have translucent bit here for uh, the uh, headlights uh, you can see great molded detail for the little vent thing on the inside they're just really spectacular uh, it has a lot of panel lines on it but it blends in i feel uh, i mean the only ones that kind of stick out are like the straight ones that go across the top there that probably is a little bit more of just a nitpick, I guess, but everything else has a nice angular cut to it, which goes nicely with the flow of the overall vehicle. Uh, he does have rubber tires, which is really nice. So he rolls as rolling things should do. Uh, but for a comparison, and I I almost don't even wanna do this because I feel like it's such a, such a, a bad thing. Oh, and he does have side view mirrors and you can see that you can move that around and it has silver paint on there. Um, 
This is the deluxe class uh, from Hasbro, and I feel like it's not even a fair comparison. It, it's, it's absolutely not. Uh, while the overall look is really well done in terms of recreating how he looked in the movie, I mean, this nails it. The robot mode is just... It blows everything out of the water. This guy blows everything out of the water that's come around before. I just so obviously the size is fairly substantial, but like I said, this is more meant to fit as like a masterpiece style. So he fits in with like Leader Class Optimus, the movie masterpiece Bumblebee. I mean, they all fit in that kind of scale and um it, like i said scale is usually how we use the term masterpiece the size the scale complexity things of that nature uh but this is just when i say a masterpiece for this guy i mean it as a very impressive toy that has an amazing amount of engineering it, it really is just a masterpiece and the transformation is not bad at all considering what this thing does the transformation is ridiculously awesome. Now, for the transformation for this guy, pay close attention because this thing really does completely transform. It's mind-blowing. I mean, people have said it's like black magic, and I'm not even going to even try to disagree. That's a great word to describe it. First, come around here to the back. You take these little pieces here and spread that out just like that you can rotate them whatever uh, i mean it's whatever makes it a little bit easier for you just kind of get them off to the side then come around here to the side here and this whole bit here on the side tabs in fairly securely kind of wiggle a little and uh get that to pop out just like that and straighten this out again you can move this to kind of get a little bit more clearance here take this whole section fold this just like that you can take this you can flop that up if you want to come around here to this now this is where things get a little bit tight you kind of just move this around this whole panel right here you want to lift and separate like that and then this is going to rotate out to the side like so get that down out of the way you can see that you have a big giant ball joint right here that you want to rotate that down and then you got a hinge here that you can collapse that in on then can take this piece and you have two little sections here so there's a tire watch watch what's going to happen tire's going to disappear you got little tabs and stuff here so you rotate this and then bring this all together and squeeze that together just like that come around here again well i mean that lift that up and then you want to bring all that down and we'll play with that here in a bit so again quite impressive how that panel just became basically a leg so again do that on this side you want to pull this apart it's a little it tabs in very securely so just pull that out just like that and again kind of hinge this kind of make some room fold this down take this whole little piece again kind of get that out of the way this whole piece right here you want to separate and hinge this down, fold this down and around. That reveals the little tabs, and then you spin this around, bring this whole piece together, give that a squeeze. Tabs in very securely, just like that, and come around here to the back section. You want to lift these legs away and kind of just hinge that up, bring this whole thing around, separate that, you can then rotate right up here just like that fold this down can bring that down you have that little section you're just straightening out his legs just like that keep that all positioned now uh, well one little piece right here you have to take this section fold this up here in the middle fold that here up in the middle now an added bit if you want to do it you don't have to the little side view mirrors uh, they hang off on the side you can rotate them around like that and leave them kind of on the side there there is a place for them in the robot mode that's not there and i'm just fiddling with these uh, legs here a bit uh, to create a much better looking leg i'm going to leave them on there i'll show you where they can go you come around here i mean this little piece right here you want to pull this here hold on get that there 
and then this hinge this out it was collapsed in pull this back a little and you'll be able to get some clearance oh well oops okay that was not supposed to happen so that's tab down take this bit fold that down that will kind of loosen everything up and it'll allow you to swivel these out to the side just like so now you can take these if you want to you can fold these around okay so we're going to hinge this there kind of creating a little flap so what you do so, sort of well here it was like that right so then put this hinge down here you're going to be bringing these little bits to connect with this keep that there just bring that down and we'll tab that all in here in a bit but you that's kind of what the position that you want that to be in come down here to the front section kind of leave these out to the side separate this can hinge that back just like that take these pull these away just like so then you want to separate this kind of hinge this out creating a little gap right here pull this piece out like that and then you can rotate his head out like so and then again you're going to start according some of this stuff down and if you want to here you can push that down so make sure you collapse all that in on itself and tab those little pieces in there you go kind of just sitting right there with the head pulled through kind of get that out of the way fold this back and around there you go yeah, well okay oh sorry take these you want to swivel these bits back you can kind of see how it hinges here and then shifts all the way back get that out of the way bring this down and then you have two little tab sections right here right there and there that these little bits will plug into that's a little bit tricky to see and line up uh, just kind of feel your way around I'll keep that there feel your way around uh, till you get it to push in there again kind of put that there kind of feel I'm not feeling it lock in there kind of right it's right there okay so did I get it I think I feel like I got it on one side there we go both sides now okay so again we're going to take these this has just been flopping around so if you can't get that locked in now you should be able to collapse that all the way in well come around to the back make sure that this is collapsed down along the back section like that and then take this hinge this and then collapse that you can then take this piece right here and this will you got a little tab here in the back right here that's going to lock in there so bring that in give that a little push and again kind of just squeeze everything down like there it sits in fairly decently uh it, it is friction that holds those tabs in so just make sure that you squeeze that very nicely you can take these bits right here you got a section here that does split and then you got little holes right there that you just rotate these around until you get that to squeeze in do that there as well rotate that around until you get that little peg on the underside to squeeze in there and take these arms rotate these down and then open these just like that do that on this side as well and then you can kind of see on the inside here you will first then rotate this uh, lighter color section around and you're going to reveal i guess you could have done this here fold this little piece out and then that rotates around then you have to fold this up and in and it locks in on the inside of the wheel well right there so again want to fold this little piece out rotate that around and then make sure you squeeze because as you can see it's loose right now squeeze this piece together locking that into place just like that and come around here you can fold this out bring this around angle that like that do that on here as well rotate angle that around 
take these little bits, slightly angle that, slightly angle that. The hand, you want to rotate that out and then spin around. You can position the little thumb out like that. I like just balling it up, making a fist. There you go. Do that on this side, ball that out and make a fist kind of position all this then one final piece you take these little side panels rotate those out like that again position his legs straighten out his head but when you're done <laughs> it is black magic but there you have peru kill aka lockdown in his amazing looking robot mode and like every reviewer before me has said the design of this guy the engineering of this guy the way that it all comes together it really is almost like black magic how this thing transforms this is amazing i'm not going to sit here and say that a hasbro can learn something from what unique toys has done here because uh, let's be honest um this is what Hasbro gave us for lockdown. Um, it's not nearly as good as this, uh, and it's not really all that great in general. Uh, the vehicle mode looks amazing. The transformation is just a ripoff of, I forgot which one of the wreckers it was from the movie, but you know, it is what it is. It, it, and this is meant to be a toy. The design and engineering on this is obviously above and beyond what you know, a toy is meant to be. This is a high-end collectible, but it doesn't really have that high of a price, to be honest. And I mean, there are elements of about this that aren't perfect, but this is really quite impressive. I will say that a lot of third-party companies could learn a lot from this because those have higher price points. They don't have a lot of the same overhead that a uh, Hasbro toy would. There are safety issues, all that kind of stuff, but this just, I'm, I'm honestly blown away by how this turned out uh now for some other size comparisons let's get that out of the way right up front here he is with my revenge of the fallen optimus prime now i no longer have the movie the best version but that, if you remember that was a lot more slender in kind of a smaller representation of basically this figure so you can get an idea that this guy definitely scales well with kind of those movie masterpiece sort of pieces and building on that, you can see that with Bumblebee here from the movie The Best Line, I think he definitely scales properly. Bumblebee is a smaller figure. A lot of people, or character, I should say, a lot of people tend to forget that. But he is a smaller dude. And even just uh, bringing in Steeljaw here, I mean, you can see that Steeljaw scales pretty decently with Bumblebee as well. These guys were fairly big little beasts. I tend to do this more with my, like, Hot Toy figures, but I, I want to show the detail on the, I mean, that is absolutely incredible. They nailed that face sculpt. I mean, it has that humanoid sort of look. And that's one aspect about you know, the evolution of the Transformer figures and characters that I, I've never been a big fan of. How they, after the Dark of the Moon, they seem to more put human elements in there. I mean, that the face looks robotic, but it, it doesn't really look all that alien. And that's one thing that I never really liked. I like them looking like aliens, but great detail throughout the entire thing. I mean, you can see a gorgeous looking chest, very accurate looking with a lot of these small details that uh, you have the back section, which again, it, it, it's amazing how that comes around. You got that little spine thing down there. He does have some die cast and you can note it by the little off color that it does. He's got a die cast butt flap. Um, I don't know really why they decided to put that there. Uh, the die cast is nice in the figure. It, it isn't overly composing. Uh, you got a little bit of a die cast piece right here. One thing that I really do like is that on a lot of these, and you can see it like right here, these little pieces here, as you move them and transform them, uh, same thing like down here, they spring out, which given a level of depth to the, you know, the character itself, uh, that kind of like an automorph sort of thing, which works really nicely. But everything else, I mean, you can see the pistons and everything. Uh, I do, like I said, kind of wish that this piece here locked in, like if there was a, a tab or something that locked that in, because as you move the leg, um, well, I mean, not really that way, but uh, when you fold it back, it does separate. So uh, the articulation is good on it, but that 
does get a little bit ugly. Uh, so that's definitely a imperfection. You come down to the feet, and then again, you got these little pieces right here. Now, some people may not like those, but what you can do is you can, on the side here, you have these little hole pieces that you can, if you wanted, you can take these out. They just peg in, and you can come up here and, well, drop them. They're tiny, so it's a little bit tricky to kind of get to, but key man. Get them. <laughs> Do -do -do. How many times can Optobotomus mess this up? All right, so you can put them right there if you wanted to take them off of the foot and give it a more clean look. Um, it's personal preference. Uh, some people don't like the whole parts forming thing. Uh, it, I, I think, yes, it does, uh, or, wow, I think overall it does clean everything up a little bit better. Why am I having such a hard time with this? There we go. Ah, there you go. So you can wedge those in there and put a little you know, extra detail in his arm, kind of fill things out. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's personal preference on what you want your figure to look like. I don't think it really looks all that bad if you kind of leave those on there, but I could see where people would want to clean that up. It, it just another level of detail that I think that they did a really good job in incorporating. Now for uh, his accessories, uh, his little claw thing, literally what you do with this is you just basically fold his hand up. Oh well, go like that, rotate it around. You fold that in like so, and then you take this and you plug that in there and you can have his hook or claw well that uh, i mean it is a very classic i mean well, i say classic like lockdown's been around for a long time uh you can do something like that if you want, wanted to you can kind of still rotate that around i mean it's it's a personal preference kind of thing uh, i like the fact that they include that i do wish like i said he came with a spark extractor so you have that um you also do have the seed uh which he can kind of you could get him to hold it if you were really desperate to have him hold the seed uh he's got his face Give me your face. Uh, this does get a little bit tricky just because it tabs in very securely. So I'm going to come in here very carefully with my little razor and just kind of wedge that out like so. And again, again uh, the detail on this is uh, really phenomenal. I'm going to leave this on, but it does get really stiff in there. So you can do that. And then does he actually have? Yeah, he actually has translucent green eyes. I don't know how well you're going to be able to. Oh, no, you can kind of see the light bleeding through there so you have that and again uh really cool looking uh so if you don't like that and i almost kind of like that a little bit more in the fact that it gives him like i said a little bit more of that alien look and then you have his big giant gun now as i showed before it does have a spring you have also a little re rectangular hole section in the back of his head and you have when you have this piece pushed up you have that little handle thingy fold that up you got a little tab there so you just bring this around you squeeze this out kind of it's, it's it's tricky to do because you're kind of doing it one-handed but hey well let's see how well i can apparently i can't do this very well squeeze that really there we go and that's basically it. You also have this little piece right here, which as I mentioned is die cast. You have a little slot right up in here that you can put that in to kind of stabilize the whole thing. But there's gun face. And uh, again, uh, ridiculous. Absolutely it is. Uh, but again, it's Michael Bay. Uh, I mean, that is quite obscene and just silly stupid. <laughs> something about it is quite cool looking I, I mean a giant cannon transforming out of a robot's face wow I, I don't know but you can then take that off now you can also come around here to the back and there is a little slot right here so if you don't want to do that you can 
tab it onto his back and you can have him kind of have weapon storage for it, which is really cool. I am dropping things all over the place. And you can do that on either side. So if you don't like it slung over that shoulder, hey, you got another tab. That, um, what? Where is it? Where is the tab? There you go. You can have it slung over that shoulder. So again, personal preference, but really uh, an absolutely impressively designed figure uh, there there are there are minor nitpicks about it but almost all of them i i have to eventually just be like yeah but look at what else it can do kind of thing i mean that's what's so amazing about it uh, for his articulation uh, that is a little bit limited the head can only really look that much you got some bits here on the side that do kind of get in the way of his chin so he can't look all the way to the left uh, but he can look way far down like that and pretty decently back the shoulders here are on swivels you can rotate that around uh, it does kind of get in the way of some other stuff but you got a hinge right here he does rotate at the uh, elbow section he's got a nice deep bend here for the elbow itself the wrists do have a little pin swivel thing so you can rotate it and then hinge the fingers are individually articulated uh, down here the thumb is on a ball joint which is nice doesn't have a hip joint but or a waist joint up here but he does have a hip joint that allows you to rotate it here. So like your waist is more up here, but he can still rotate a little bit below that. So that's really nice. He does have uh, swivels and what are those? Yeah, yeah, those are just swivels and such. But things do kind of get in the way. You want to move the butt flap out of the way and the little thing right here, but you can get a decent range of motion here with the legs. He does rotate at the upper part of the thigh. Doesn't have a thigh cut or anything. And then the knee, like I said, you do have that. It is a little bit problematic. So if you want to bend the knee, you're going to bend it and then it's going to pull that away. But then when you move it forward, because it doesn't tab, you're locked in like that. And then that swivels down. So you kind of have to hold everything to get it to move. So it, it is a little bit tricky to work the knees. But uh, again, I mean, I'm very leaning on it. And I love the fact that they actually got some painted detail on the inside there. So I'm a little bit more lenient because again, look what else it does uh he does have ankle tilt it does move forward and back you do have this piece that kind of will have a tendency to flop down and just push it back up you got these little pieces here that again uh, as i was talking about like with these little spring-loaded bits you got little spring-loaded bits here in the back these are kind of springy here like in the chest it kind of pops the chest out a little bit you got these little pieces right here that kind of flare out because of the springs just one of the best transforming figures that I've gotten this year. Uh, as I said, people ask me many, many times to do top tens. I don't uh, just because there's a lot of figures that I have to go through. Uh, this right off the bat, I would easily say is one of the best transformers of 2017. And I'm doing it all the way here in basically 2018. So, uh, I mean... I'm just that impressed with how this figure turned out. He is a masterpiece without any kind of reservations of that word at all. Now, transforming him back is a little bit more difficult going into his car than coming into the robot, but it's still not really all that terrible. First, what I'm going to come around and do here is uh, loosen up these bits here. These tab in very, very securely, so you kind of have to wedge from the bottom to pull that little tab out. So detach that just like so. Things will probably detach and loosen up here. You can take this bit right here. You can detach this, pull that away, and then play around with some other things. You can straighten this out. You can bring this around. This is going to rotate and spin. Yeah, get that. Come on, rotate that around oh remember take these bits out if you uh, actually put those in there make sure that you remove these go ahead and pull that out from the other side hey they get in there they, it was hard for me to get them in there before now it's difficult to get them in so we're going to rotate that and fold that in just like that do that on this side as well fold that down hinge that 
around like so. Come around here to the inside of the uh, elbow, detach this little piece. Again, tabs in very securely, so kind of just wedge that, and then you want to spin the arm around and then fold that in just like that. Do that on this side as well. We're going to pull the little locking mechanism away. You'll detach all that and then rotate this. I'll keep that straight and then rotate that around and then just kind of push that section down. We'll fiddle with the hands here in a bit. It's a little bit easier knowing which way to position the fingers and everything once you have it all lined up properly. Come around here. You're going to detach all this. This section here, kind of fold these bits out and then kind of pull the torso away like that. Take the little center piece, fold that out, and then take the head. You want to rotate that around and that will tuck down just like that. Kind of fold this back like so. Take this back section, move that away from the body. Take this, you can rotate this around. You're bringing all this stuff up and around and then rotate this. You got a little hinge, you wanna spin that around. Basically, you're going to try and fit all this here and kind of line everything up so that it's positioned perfectly. So keep that shifted like that. Then you're going to bring these down. Oh, sorry. You got a little hinging thing. Bring that little hinge down. Bring that little hinge down like that. These little sections here, I'm going to, sorry, rotate that around like that. And then rotate that like that. So you have the uh, little wheel sections facing forward just like so. And you can see basically what's happening. Fold the fists and the hands in just like so. And then they're going to come up here, keep that there. They're going to come up here and kind of sandwiched together. This is where you can fiddle with the little fingers and rotate those around, kind of just collapse all that. Put the thumb on the inside of the fist, makes it a little bit easier. Collapse that there so you see that the hands are facing the bottom. Do that here on this side. Now the thumb's already in there. Fold this down, rotate at the wrist. There you go, like that. And then you wanna have the little spring-loaded sections on the inside, you're going to bring them together like so. So keep that there, bring this down. You can tab the front section of the car into the little wheel sections right there. Fiddle with this, this is going to shift up. Keep that, shift it all the way. And then you have to tab these along the side, so I guess you don't, it's a little bit easier to do it like this. Find those little grooves on the inside here. You have some slots and tabs that will squeeze in. There you go, do that on both sides. Then you can bring this down. Lock that into place, just like that. Okay, and then pull all this away from the body. Straighten this bit out. This is going to come up. You want to kind of get everything flush. Rotate these little window pieces around that way. Kind of line them up with the top bit here. And again, you're then going to bring these two bits together. Give that a good squeeze like so. And then this, when you squeeze it together, you're going to have little tabs right on the uh, forearm section that this little cod piece, as you can see, you got the little rectangular sections. Those are going to rotate up and lock this into place. But again, you got to kind of squeeze everything and look to see um, if everything is going to squeeze together. It's a little bit tricky. Um, I'm probably not showing it very good, and I apologize. But just squeeze that, and there we go. That'll lock into place, and you can see how everything is coming back together again. These we'll have to fiddle with a lot, collapse this up. Uh, you wanna make sure that these windows stay out nicely, but you can see you're getting them very nicely back into his vehicle mode. Come down here to the legs. You can, if you really want to, you can rotate these around right now uh, like so, so that the intersection of the thigh is pointing forward. You'll then hinge this out, 
kind of just separating that. If you want to here, you can bring everything together and you have a little, kind of get this out of the way. On the underside here of his thighs are some slots that the intersection of this will line up with and tab into. Very tricky, again, to see that. Uh, you just kind of have to feel around and feel for it locking into place. You have to make sure that the thighs are rotated properly so that they line up underneath there. And part of the problem is it's black, so it's hard to see underneath there. So again, okay, so there's, I think I got that one. And then this one again, we're, oh, there we go. So just feel for it to, to be able to tab in there properly and just kind of leave it like that. You can then take these, you want to separate this away then take this little panel. This will fold out. And then again, you got that little ball peg right there that you want to rotate this around. And I can get that out of the way. Then fold this down and around, completing that little leg section. You can take this, fold this in, come around here to this piece. This is a little bit tricky to get to. Fold this little section. I'm gonna use my, well, I'll use a sword. Fold this little piece out just like so, and then bring this up and in. Now, you got like the knees are bending here, but the easiest way is to kind of come in on an angle and then swoop up like so, so that it kind of pushes that piece down. Otherwise, you gotta try to hold it down and it's problematic. And then there's a lot of tabs and everything here, but basically once you have everything lined up, it slots in there just about perfectly. So it's not too difficult to kind of line this up. So again, and then you wanna make sure that these windows stay up because otherwise they droop down when you're transforming. So make sure that you're lifting that kind of up. Uh, again, here, let me fold this little piece out on the foot like so come around here you want to detach the back of his leg take this piece hinge this back and then rotate on that ball joint towards the top lining everything up properly get that kind of out of the way like so fold this if you didn't have this fold it out fold that out and then bring that in then again kind of push this down and kind of swoop it up, give it a little push. Everything basically, like I said, lines up perfectly along that side, really very impressive. Then you come around here to the back, rotate this, rotate that, you bring the two halves together, squeeze, and there you have uh, Peru Kill back in his vehicle mode. And then I guess for the final touch, you can put these you know, side view mirrors back in. If you didn't take them off, they're already going to be there. So it's a little bit easier than, you know, parts forming. But this really is one of the most impressive transforming toys I have in my collection. I mean, I have many, many times defended Hasbro saying that it's very difficult to create an accurate look at vehicle mode and robot mode because the... CGI is all over the place. This figure basically makes me a liar because what Unique Toys was able to do was take a very accurate looking robot mode and create a very movie accurate looking robot mode for this guy. This is truly spectacular. The transformation is amazing. What they're able to accomplish with this, and you look at the bottom, I mean, it's like, it doesn't even necessarily look like a robot. I mean, what they were able to accomplish with this is leaps and bounds better than anything I've seen officially or unofficially. And like I said, time and time again, I have talked about how it would be impossible to create a real world representation of what we see in the movies. And Unique Toys was basically like, hey, Optibotamus, hold my beer, watch what I'm about to do. Now, some people may not like him because, you know, it is a Bayformer. And that's perfectly understandable, but you can't deny the incredible design of this guy, at least in terms of a toy. Both modes look absolutely spectacular. And he comes with a decent amount of accessories. I do wish he came with his spark extractor, like I said. And maybe if they took the seed and made this like die cast, I'd like this a little bit more. But the accessory count is pretty decent. And hey, we, we get a... 
little steel jaw guy. So, I mean, that's pretty good. And all of it is wrapped up in a price that's pretty reasonable. Now, unfortunately, for some reason, I don't know why, but Big Bad Toy Store elected not to put this guy on their site. Uh, so I did have to get mine off of eBay, but there are plenty of other websites that sell figures that you can check out. So if this guy's a figure that you'd like to add to your collection, good luck and happy hunting. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. So once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optobotomous. Don't forget that if you like this video, I would really appreciate you letting me know by hitting that thumbs up button. Believe it or not, it does go a long way towards helping me out, and I would really appreciate it. Also, hey, if you're new here, welcome. And before you go, make sure you subscribe in case you haven't already subscribed. That way you'll get instant email notifications whenever I upload a new video, and you'll never miss out on a future review of mine. Or hey, if you already subscribed, now more than ever, it's important to make sure that you're getting those email notifications. We all know just how unreliable that YouTube subscription box is, and the best way to make sure that you don't miss any reviews of mine is to click on that little bell right below this video and double check your settings to make sure that they're set so that you get those email notifications. And as always, until next time, till all are one.